Hey everyone, Melanie Minchinger here, illustrator for Gina K Designs. Today I have a new project for you with my newest set from Gina K Designs, Open Book. I'm going to be showing a way that you can use those reverse masks and masks that I showed in my previous video, along with an embossing technique to make these pages look like they are gilded. So pretty and fancy. I'm also going to be using two of my past sets. These are my faith-based sets, Women of Faith. And then I'm also going to be using the coordinating This Girl Is. And I just think that the theme of both of these sets and the images, the line art and the bold, goes so well with this book image. In addition to those stamp sets, we're going to be using the Large Misty. And I'll give some reasons for why I like using it for this project. But you can, of course, use the Smaller Misty or the 4x6 block for this book stamp and then other acrylic blocks for the smaller images. The ink pads that I'm using today, I've got the Gina K Designs Amalgam ink. I'm using some of the Plum Punch. I've got the Sandy Beach for doing my sponging to age that and give it a nice glow. And then one of the Jumbo Sponge Daubers. I'm also going to be using the GB8 Spectrum Noir Alcohol Marker to do some shadowing. Got a little bit of adhesive here just for layering the mats. You can use a tape runner or some Connect Glue or other adhesive. The cardstock that I'm using today, I've got the Gina K Plum Punch. This is just a standard A2 size base, four and a quarter by 11 inches scored at five and a half. And then I've got some layering weight cardstock, three and three quarter by five and an eighth for my stamping, and then a larger one to layer that on, which is four inches by five and a quarter. Also, we're doing a sale right now for Gina's birthday, 15% off. So I want to show one of my favorite background stamps, and I think that this script stamp on rubber is just so beautiful for adding texture and just romance to that book image. And then we've got a heat gun for doing our embossing, and I've got the tidy towel handy for making sure I get those stamps nice and clean. So I think that's everything that we're using. I will mention it if I need to grab something else. Also, those masks from last week, so we're using the one where you've got the whole book cut out that's gonna cover our image for sponging on the outside, and then the one with just the top pages cut out. So we'll layer those on in a second. And then I've got some scratch paper for catching my embossing powder. I think that's everything. Okay, so let's begin by getting this first stamped mat ready. So what I wanna do here is I want to first, before we do the book, Let's go ahead and do that background stamp. This way, when we do our sponging, we're not going to be blurring our stamped images at all. They'll be nice and crisp when we do those last. So I'm gonna ink this all up with the Sandy Beach ink. Don't need to get the whole thing inked because my mat is smaller, but just wanna get good coverage there. And then I'm just going to keep that face up and just drop my mat onto it. And this is another good use for the scratch paper just to cover it up so that you're not getting any ink on your fingers. And we can reuse this again and again for protecting our work surface. And then we'll peel this away. And we're going to be doing some sponging on it. So don't worry about if you don't get every little bit of that script on there. So the next thing I wanna do, I wanna do some sponging on this. And I'm gonna put this into my Misty so that I know where that book is. So we'll do add the book. So I've already got that lined up. Got it right in the corner, but I can just put my magnets right there at the top. So the first time that we do the book, we're going to be doing it in the Jet Black Amalgam. The next time we do it, we're going to be using the watermarking ink. Press all over. Okay. All right, so now what we're gonna do, and you can leave it in here and do your sponging right in the misty. So I'm gonna take my Sandy Beach and swirl my sponge dauber around on it. Now I wanna cover up the book so that we can add some shadowing and a nice glow and depth to the back here. Oh. That's my son, Jonathan. He says hello. 
So don't worry about getting it all completely uniform. That's going to make kind of a play of light on your card. It's going to allow the script to show through. And then you don't have to worry about it being completely uniform on all sides. It's also going to allow if you have a spot where you get the ink heavier than you want. And just pick it up and check. Okay, that looks good to me. And what I want to do is I want to add a little bit of shadowing in the middle of the book. So think about when you open a book with a spine, how those pages are going to curl in. So we want to create some shadow there in the middle. So depends on how much ink you still have loaded onto that dauber. But you just want to work it out towards the edge, leaving a lot of that white space there in the middle. If you need to go back on and add a little bit of ink, you can, okay? And then you can also, if you want, add a little bit to this outside here so that you really get that curling effect of the pages, okay? All right, now what we're gonna do is we're gonna add that shadow with the marker. So I'm gonna go just underneath here and you might wanna do one to two passes of it with your marker, depending on how heavily you applied your sponging and your ink. So the reason why I'm using this GB8 today, this more golden brown, you're not gonna have gray shadows when you've got a warm light or a yellow brown work surface. You're gonna have, or, or that background mat. So that's why I'm using the golden tones here. And then you can put a little bit of that on the pages underneath and again it's going to be lightest in the middle there where the light is coming through under the pages and then you can just trace down the middle where it's going to be the darkest okay so that's our sponging now what we're going to do I'm going to leave this in the misty because we're going to be going back to that in a moment to do the embossing so I'm going to cover this up now. So I want to use the one where you are covering up that spine to do my stamping because I don't want the woman's face coming down onto those pages. So I'm going to just put this right here and make sure I have room there for my book. Yeah. And you see, I have a couple different versions of this card. So I've got one where I used a sentiment from Women of Faith, two sentiments actually. This one though is the one I'm gonna make today because I really like how the line art goes with that bold image. So we're gonna take the smaller girl with the longer torso. I'm gonna put her on this side so that I've got that silhouette up in the corner here. Place that right there, right about there. And if you only want her on one side, then you're gonna to wanna to use the mask that I showed you before in the previous video where it's gonna mask off the other page so you don't see it. But I want it going all the way across, okay? And then I'm gonna pick out a word for her to have on there. So. Several different words fit. I'm gonna do the loved. And it's nice, you can stamp all these at one time with the Misty. Okay, so I'm gonna just push that. So this magnets are nice for holding my book and my mask. So ink this up all over. Make sure I really got that silhouette inked up. And I'm just gonna close this. Pick that up, okay, and now we're gonna do just a few little butterflies on here with the plum. So I've got, you could use butterflies from both sets. I've got line art ones and then these gold ones. So I'm gonna take these three butterflies. You've got side views and then a large one here. So I'm gonna do, see I think I'll do this one right here. 
and I want to have one just look like it's landing on her finger right there and then I'm gonna do one over here and just make sure that that's covering so that's the only one you really need to worry about because that's the only one that's overlapping on this. Okay. And then I also want to stamp off one butterfly just because I want to have a little bit of variation in the plum. So I think I'm going to take, let's see, I'm going to do this little one right here. No, this one. Okay. I'm just going to stamp this right on there so I have a lighter one to do. And then like that. And maybe I'll do one more over here. All right. Okay, so that's all the stamping that I'm doing. So now we're going to go back and we are going to emboss this. So what I'm going to do is you wanna make sure that this is clean before you use your clear Versamark ink. So I'm gonna ink this up with the Versamark. Oh, and actually, I didn't mean to do these top portions. Sorry, I'm, I'm thinking about my son coming back in here and eating his lunch. He came home during lunch and interrupted my filming. Okay, so you can emboss the whole book, but I really wanted to show it just the edges. So I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna just ink up these sides and ink up the bottom. You can cover up that spine if you want. All right, so we've got it there in the corner. So just lay that back down it away it's kind of sticky so it peeled it up all right now we're going to add our embossing powder so I've got the rose gold embossing powder and I'm just gonna and if you're worried that you got any of that up at the top or didn't clean it off well if you went ahead and did that like me just pour it on the sides and skip that top part okay so it's only sticking to the areas that I inked so we'll just funnel that back in put the top back on so you don't have to worry about it blowing everywhere when you start it I've done that in a few videos okay and just tap it off all right so for your embossing we can hold it up here since we don't have to do any embossing and not worry about burning our fingers you want to keep it moving let me let me put this over here actually all right So you want to keep it moving. It gets really hot, so you don't want it to scorch the paper. It will warp a little bit, but then you can just turn it over and heat the other side. You're going to see all of this powder go from flat to a shiny metallic, and that's when you know you're done. And if you want to go in and color that girl, you can. And let me do just a little bit more here. There we go. I just love this look. I love a book with gilded pages. It just feels so special and magical. And a lot of Bibles are gilded like that, obviously. And then you'll just take your base and your tape runner or your connect glue. And so I offset these just a bit but it just makes that golden sandy beach stand out that much more. And then layer this onto the plum base. I also did one, I adding some of the tranquil teal. This is another one of those new 2018 colors. And I also used the flower and then just did some direct to stamp with the two different pads. And then here's the other ones that I showed before. So let me know in the comments which of these you like best. 
I hope you enjoy this gilded technique and are excited about the different ways that you can mask off these different pages. Visit us at Gina K Designs and my blog, Hands, Head, and Heart, for more ideas and inspiration using all of our stamp sets. I've got all the supplies listed in the, in the description below. Please leave comments about your favorites and what you would like to see next in a video. And I've got the coupon code. Again, it's good only through February 8th. Spark Joy for 15% off. Thanks again for watching today. God bless. Thank <laughs> you.